a lot of people don't keep going through because there's an obstacle in the way. Yep. But the obstacle is the very thing that sort of helps them become better people. Yep. Overcoming that obstacle. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Life in a Show. I'm your host, Jason Wojo. On the Life in a Show, we help people make more, work less, and live awesome lives. I am joined, well, and I and I just saw you, man, for a couple of days at our Get a Life Getaway, my co-host, Polish Peter. What's up, bro? I can't seem to get away from you, man. Dude, I know. <laughs> you're, you're stuck. <laughs> you're stuck. You so what Raleigh, he's referring to, we just had an awesome, awesome, awesome event in Raleigh, man. It was and, awesome. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, now we get to uh, reconnect and uh, have a conversation with a um, guy named Brad that I think, you know, yeah. you can probably do a better introduction on him because you've known him quite yeah, a lot man. longer than I have. So you guys may remember an episode with this gentleman. His name is Brad Cousineau, uh, who has this really cool story of coming from like literally in the trenches to walking on uh, a football team, like with like, I mean, just, just think of like Rudy on steroids. Uh, to play in professional ball, to all these things. And so he has come back for a second episode because he has written a book and he's learned more lessons and he's expanded upon some of the things that he's taken away from his previous experiences that we're going to dive into mm -hmm. in this episode. So we're going to talk about some of the things he's learned through this journey. And it's very cool like because because i'm i'm seeing some of the lessons that he took from the last episode and if you want to listen to that one go find it because we don't we don't go into depth on this story here um maybe in the show notes we can we can throw the episode number in there and uh and i want to just there's a lot of nuggets in here and he actually shares some nuggets uh mm -hmm. that he's kind of really reflected on through his life that have benefited him yeah so uh i love the fact that he was talking about authenticity and there were some those 10 rules that he talks about that he's passing it on to his kids and people around his yeah. life that i think are pretty cool to be able to go and hmm, i wonder if that could apply to my life could i create something like that for myself yeah. uh, so i would encourage you guys to listen write any of them down that resonate with you and then create your own kind of a guidelines own uh ways of living in your life and your own family that's it. Let's go right now to our episode of Brad Cousineau. Brad, what's up, man? Welcome back to the Life Eater Show. Hey, man. It's been a while, but I'm, I'm glad to be back. Well, it sounds like you've been up to some pretty awesome things, man. And, and so if any of our listeners haven't listened to your original interview, you got to go back and find that. And we could probably put a link in the show notes to that one. Um, but it was an interesting conversation, man. And, I, and, I, and that, I, I remember that conversation to this day because of your story of really, I mean, an extraordinary kind of like story of like down and out, rough upbringing, hard times to moving through that and going on to become like, you know, a, 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 a substantial success and all the journeys and the, and the lessons along that path. And now you've written a book, which by, by the way, it's not out yet, right? We're looking at May. Is that true? No, the book, the book is out. It's You can get it on Amazon.com. You can get it at Barnes & Noble, uh, you know, right now. Oh, it is out. Okay. Um, yeah, it's out. Um, it, it, it's it been about six months. Oh, so been... perfect, man. So so tell us tell us about the book, man. Like, why do you think you felt this need to write a book? Was this therapeutic for you to go through that and heal from it? Or had you already healed? Do you think it's for other people to... Uh, yeah, I, I believe. Like, what, what do you think? I, why do you think you felt the need to get it out there? I had really already went through a lot of issues um, in my life before starting to write the book. So I'd already got over a lot of that stuff uh, that would have caused me to really curl up into a fetal ball and say, you know, why, why am I reliving this? I think it was really the fact is that as I did my speaking, and or I shared or I've mentored men or something along that line, it just, it seemed like I had a knack of making a difference to people. And the more authentic I was and the more real I was about where I came from, the more that it seemed to help them. And so I, I started recognizing that and it was, and it, and it really came across to the point is, Brad, you, you know, uh, the voice in my head said, Brad, do you know, do you know all the troubles that you went through growing up? You know, the, the being beaten and yelled and screamed at and, and having all these horrible things. That, do you think it was just done for you? There are many other people out there that have went through difficult, challenging times. And they just think mm -hmm. the way that I did, that that's my life. That's the hand I've been dealt. 
there's nothing I can do about it. And it's wrong. That's why the book is called Unwanted, Unwar Unwanted for My Parents. My parents were 15 and 16 when they got when they got married because of me. They had to drop out of high school. You know, they lost all their friends. Uh, they were the, you know, my mom was embarrassed to be seen with me because mm -hmm. I was back in 1953. That wasn't yeah. real cool, you know? Right. And um, so um, I just uh, really became convinced that I needed to write the book because if it will help other people, and it does. See, I, yeah. I've got letters from people that have written, uh, what, read my book, and with tears in their eyes, they said, you know, Brad, this is the best book I've ever read because it was real. You, t I tell about all my, all my problems that I had. I, I was a thief. I cheated. I lied. I stole growing up because that's the way I was raised. Right. You know, and and as a result of that, if that's the way that you're raised and you don't know any difference, um, and at the same time as I would be, every time I was beat, then I would be, uh, a mom would put me in isolation. I'd either be in the basement or I'd be in the garage, and I would sit there and I would just be, have tears down my eyes wondering, will I ever find love? Will somebody ever love me? Hmm. Because wow. I, I never experienced it. I was never wanted by my parents. So the unwanted unworthy and the, that's the second part of the title unworthy is unworthy is the fact is that my mom and dad told me i'd never amount to anything i was no good i was a bum i'd never like that hundreds and hundreds of times well once you hear things hundreds and hundreds of times you start believing it yeah and then unshackled unshackled is when i stop believing the lies the, uh, we don't have to believe the things that our parents or our um coaches or our teachers if they're telling you things that aren't true but you start believing them as true then yeah. they're true right, right and what you what we've got to do is recognize that become unshackled from that and that became the basis of you know of my of the book yeah. i'm constantly in the book i'm i'm sort of flashes back and forth um i'm playing with the chicago bears get released from the chicago bears I end up um, having a conversation with the coach, either play me or trade me. I'm going to, you know, like this. And he basically um, fired me or, or, or let me go the next day. Immediately, immediately. The voice of my mom's from my mom was in my head. You're no good. You're a bum. You'll never amount to anything. Blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on and on. But. I look back on that as being one of the best things that ever happened to me. I ended up playing with the New York Giants and playing with the Pittsburgh Steelers after that. But that was one of the best things that happened to me because I had to start facing the facts of all the lies that I was growing up under. And I grew up under all those lies of my mom. And even though I was a successful football you know, guy, I was an All-American, all that, people didn't know all the stuff that was, go that was going on. Yeah. Listen, I love what you're sharing here with the audience because I think it really comes from your heart. And a couple of times you mentioned it already in a podcast about being authentic, being real. Um, so I got two questions for you. First question is, because I think in today's society, right, when we're looking at people when they're out there, I'm not so sure how many people are actually being authentic, like being real. Like, you know, there is this idea, what other people really knew like what is going on with me? What's going on in my life? You know, if you look at social medias, I barely, I don't think there's ever where people actually talk about what's really going on there. How important is authenticity, I think, to be able to grow in life, you think? Well, in, in my opinion, it's it's absolutely critical because otherwise you're building someone else's life. It's not your life. You know, if you're, if, if you're, that's the problem with all, all that's going on in all the social media, Instagram and things like that. Everyone's trying to put their best foot forward. They right. send out the, the nice pictures. They do all this stuff. They make it sound like they've got this wonderful, wonderful life. And it's 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 a prop. In, in many ways, it's a prop because they're not being authentic. And, you know, um, you can't fool yourself. When, when it really comes down to it, we can't fool ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we we can we can play around with it, and so for me, it was just the thing is that I've always been um, authentic in the sense that 
Um, I'm, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be real. Um, and it, it became, when I became a Christian, it just went to an nth degree, whereas I was going to show myself to be who I really was. And so in the book, I get into a lot of things about my my life, my past, the way that I was growing up. You know, I talk about, uh, you know, stealing stuff from a store and getting caught and what that meant and all those things like that. A lot of times people, when they write a book and they, it's a memoir, they, they sort of gloss over some of the realities of their life and make it sound too good. And I, I didn't want to do that. And at the same time is um, it uh, made me a better person because... I, that's not the person I wanted to be. And, and, and that sort of became the catalyst of typically people that know me when I'm in high school, uh, college and, and grade school. One of the things that really came up is I was playing a game that, that was inauthentic. And by saying that is that I bet you I've had a hundred people come back to me that's read my book and said, Brett, we had no idea that all this was going on in your life. And they were my best friends from high school or grade school. I never had a friend over at my house ever because I didn't know what I was going to, what, what was going to happen. Mm. And so that became a real important part is being authentic. Hey, we'll get right back to our episode. Well, I want to tell you about something really quickly here in a moment. And that is our Get A Life Getaway event. This is an event we've been doing going on 15 years now. We've had almost 10,000 people go through it. And it's an incredible event. If you want to transform your life, if you don't have the life you dream about, the one that you know you deserve and the one you worked hard for, and you are sick of kind of being sick and tired and not having all the things and experiences in your life that you know uh, are waiting for you, then you need to get to this event. Uh, I'll just tell you right now, this event will transform absolutely everything in your life. We will take you hand in hand and walk you through step by step the process to create your ideal life in every single area because they all fit together. Um, this is a proven formula. We've been doing this so long now. We've tweaked it. We've refined it. We've perfected it. And we would love for you to be there. Um, Peter and I teach these personally. We do not delegate these to anybody else. This is part of our vision. We love pouring into people and we'd love to see you at an event. Now, to make it even more enticing for you, um, that even of itself, it's awesome, is we're going to give you, because you're a loyal podcast listener, 50% off ticket price. So when you go to lifeinair.com, that's lifeinair.com, you'll go to the events page, you'll see the Get a Life Getaway. When you check out, after you choose the specific event you want to do, and by the way, we do about a half dozen of these events per year, three of the Get a Life Getaway and three of the Business Builder Workshop, you simply go to that checkout page. And when you're ready to check out, there's a promo code you will enter. It's called PODCAST. Use the promo code PODCAST for 50% off the Get a Life Getaway, and we will see you there. I've always wanted to be a difference maker. I just didn't know how to go about it. And... As I go into the book, I just really talk about some of the things. My my team was just inducted into the uh, Miami Hall of Fame. The team that I played on, the best team of all time, the whole team was inducted. And I gave all my former teammates, coaches, a copy of my book. And I got this little card here that I included in there, which is sort of a summary of what I call truth nuggets. Things that I have shared with my kids, my grandkids, all the audiences that I've spoken to over the years, and I've spoken to probably hundreds of plus thousand people. So can we hear at least two of those truth nuggets? Can we hear two of them? I was going to give them all to you, but if you only want two, okay. Bring it. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's let I, here's, I, these are shared with family, friends, and like that. And it basically says, and this is in my book. Love God first and foremost, then love your family, and then love others. You, you can't love others if you don't love the people in your own family. Right. Just, you know, just like that. And then know who you really are, a beloved child of our, of our, our great God who delights in you. Uh, my upbringing came from such a thing that I sort of had a fire and brimstone God. A God that was looking at this every time I messed up, he was going to sit there and pound on me. And the reality of it is that's not God. And that uh, he delights in me. Point number three, always give your very best in everything you undertake. In school, sports, chores, hobbies, jobs, being a friend, a mentor, a life coach. 
why knowingly cheat yourself by coasting just because you can get away with it? This happens all the time in sports. And I got, when I got to the NFL, I had to give 100% all the time because I, like, I, but there was guys I played against, they only had to give 75 or 80% because they were bigger, stronger, faster. They've never had to give 100%. So when, t when everything was on the line, guess who made the big plays? Me. Because when you're giving 100% all the time, and if you're only giving 80%, you're coasting. But yeah. you don't know that and because of the fact is that you can get away with it. And I've told this to my kids all the time. I says, never coast, never cheat yourself. Always give your very best. If you can win a game and you've won by 20 points, but you haven't given your best, then that's not a good sign. But if you've lost the game and you've given your very best, you can't do any better than that. That's uh, what I do. That's a great light life, life or lesson right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Number four, be a difference maker. Be a difference maker to family, friends, neighbors, classmates, teammates, coworkers, and all those that's in your sphere of influence. See, we all have a sphere of influence. And that's where we need to be different. We're not, I'm not called to, 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 to preach to the, to the world. I'm called for my own little universe, the people that I interact with. That's where I'm supposed to be a difference maker. And... You, you can do that. And, and what ends up making is everyone, when you think about family, friends, neighbors, classmates, teammates, coworkers, everybody's got some of those in their lives at one point in time or another. And then the, the last one is finish life well. It goes along with life in there. Regardless of your age, whether you're eight or 98, live a life, leave a life legacy that benefits your family friends, and others for generations. See, if we can do that, then that's a life well lived that we can do. And it doesn't mean that we have to leave millions of dollars to people, to our to our family. You know, everyone gets all caught up in this. Man, it's so much better if, if you're a father and you're spending time with your child and you're, you're teaching them the things that are important, you know, like this instead of, uh, of, of raising, which is one of the reasons why I think Life on Air really resonates with me is because it's it's a lifestyle and it's not about going out and getting the almighty dollar. It's about utilizing and, and becoming that. And then I've got a number of different slogans on here. It's like, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. And that is so true. Our heart, which is the real us, if we hang with the wrong people, guess what? We become like them. If we're involved in a company that's doing the wrong things, and, and many companies out there are, you're, you're in sales. So you sort of embellish the benefits. You sort of, you know, like this, that just, that just comes back to haunt you. People that have read the book, um, it, it, it amazes me. I had no idea. And that was not my point. I, and I didn't write the book to make money. You know, I, I mean, I, I do I hope I make money? Yeah, but that wasn't the reason. One, it's a life legacy. And it's also something that people tell me over and over again that they that they needed it and they pass it on to somebody else. It's it's one of those kind of I I, I am blown away at how well that it's been received. And why do you as think that is author, Brad? Uh -huh. why do you think that is? Like what what's the lesson someone's gonna get from this book? Like if you had to summarize the, the why someone should read this, what is it? Don't believe the lies that you've been brought up under to the point where it affects you and you become like that. And then from there, in my opinion, um, what's the word I want to look for? You, you are, you are making a difference to people all around you and you don't even know it. It might be a negative difference. It might, and by being authentic and real and from the perspective of that, here, uh, let me just read it uh, on the back of the book here. I, there's this guy that I've never met before. He's an attorney from Pittsburgh. He writes me a long letter, and I've taken a portion of it and got his approval for it. And he goes, uh, and it says this. I've never read any book that sparked my emotions or which was as enjoyable, inspirational as Unwanted, Unworthy, Unshackled. 
this book is a true masterpiece. As I, as I read, I found myself wiping away tears more than a few times. The five immutable laws revealed in the book are profound and insightful. I'm now unshackled from the lies that can that uh, that I face the future with with renewed faith and hope. I didn't realize, and how nor would I. He says, he says, you know what I'm saying? He says, I've been a very successful attorney, but my wife has got vascular dementia. She had a couple of strokes. She's like this, and right now, she needs a hundred percent care. And. It's affected me so much because I can never get away because she doesn't want anybody else there but me. Tears coming down in his face. And 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 as he went on, he just basically said, he says, I've now got hope. Based upon reading your book and some of the things that I share in there, I can live with this. Because what I told him was, after, as we talked, I says, this is your new job. Your new job is to take care of your wife that you promised for better or for worse. In good times and bad times, you're going to be there. And she needs you there right now. And he says, I know that now. And otherwise, because he was always trying to bring somebody else in. He can afford somebody to be there at the house. She just goes nuts when someone goes right. to the house. And he loves her. And he wants to... to, to um, be there for her and at the same time is is that he's also got a life and so as this was all coming out i've had a, a couple of times he comes to cincinnati to visit his daughter and and we spend some time together and stuff like that that's the kind of what, what's happened when people have been reading this book and it was never intended to be the religious book but as he got near the end of the book he started recognizing I need, I need some of this. I need this for my life. Uh, and, and, it, and it turned out to be something that's been very, very positive for him. Man, that's powerful. I'll tell you one, one other area that I think we haven't, I'd, I'd like to kind of, I know we have a, a little bit of time left here, but I want to kind of finish on this topic is like, we've talked about the benefits for the reader and the listener and the, these lessons of overcoming tremendous obstacles and defying the odds. But also I want to also mention like there's probably an equally cool part from your perspective, and not only in terms of like how you feel about contributing, but basically of taking the action to write a book and some of the things that have happened since then. So for instance, like I know, like from personal experience, right? Writing a book is a large undertaking. It, it is a huge goal and many 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 people want to write a book but never do and here you are you have and so i can't help but also imagine that you've experienced some sort of level of like satisfaction and pride knowing that you pushed through and completed this and now you're impacting lives and i'm curious like has this led to other things for you and now maybe this is that first step to now share more globally or with audiences or speaking like well, how has this looked for you and how has it played out since writing the book? There's a lot more people that can get access to a book that can get access to me speaking someplace. Got it. And so as a result, that became a driving point. And then from there, opportunities, once the manuscript was done and some people read the manuscript, they gave it to a couple of people that were in the movie business. And they go, yeah, this, this could be great. A great mm -hmm. story. It could be a great story. It's it's Rudy on steroids. Rudy got into right. one time. Awesome. You know, and I, I ended up playing, you know, all American, playing the NFL and all that stuff. And I was a walk on, you know, work worked in that. There's many, many parts of my story is what if I didn't do that? What if I didn't write the letters to the coaches? What if I didn't work in the storm sewers, digging out all the crap and doing all that stuff? What if I wasn't willing to be a walk-on? All those things are like A lot of people don't keep going through because there's an obstacle in the way. Yep. But the obstacle is the very thing that sort of helps them become better people. Yep. Mm. Overcoming that obstacle. Yeah. And, You're and speaking so, that truth, man. Yeah, so, I totally agree with you, man. That's awesome. I love it because I think you know, those truths that you mentioned earlier, I think that's exactly what got you to where you're at today. Okay. Give the so, audience the last, uh, how they get the book and um, 
just on you, you can get the book at, you can, one you can go to www.bradcousino c o u s i n o dot com and then that's my website and it's got a bunch of videos and things of me speaking a book right here amazon.com barnesandnoble.com are the best places to get it online i'll, I'll tell you man like i I remember your story from the first podcast and that was literally years ago. And so I can only imagine how cool it is to have it concisely put together in a book that people can learn from that can be inspired by motivated by, and also kind of, I'm sure that a lot of people probably see elements of their own story within your story and it gives them the permission to succeed. And that little push that says like, Hey, this is possible. And so I'm excited that you put this out there, man. That the, and, and the other thing, you know, it, now that these opportunities are presenting themselves, whether it's a listen, whether it's a movie or not, it's like you took action, you did it, and frankly, writing a book was almost another obstacle that you overcame, and now you're seeing the fruits of that. And so, I'm excited for you, my friend. Can't wait it's, to see what happens from here. It's it's uh, one really, when, when you accomplish something that takes a lot of. I mean, writing a book is tough. I never, yeah. I didn't think it would be nearly as tough as it was because because just of dealing with all of the, all the things. But I, I would just share with you is now that I know how many people that it's touched and people I would have never been able to meet. Um, it's one of those things that awesome. I said, I'm glad that I did it. Uh, I don't know if there'll be book number two. But there's, there's, you know, I'm 70 years right. old. So, um, well, yeah, wait and see, man. Right. You'll, you'll, you'll get that nudge if you if it's meant to be. Well, Brad, thanks for being life in our show, man. Thanks, man. Peter, great seeing you. I'm glad, you. glad we were able to make it so that you could be on. And I appreciate you. Well, thank yeah, you so much for sharing your story with everybody. Thanks, guys. Dude, man, I'm uh, good for him for finishing that book, man, because both you and I know how daunting this task is, right? <laughs> like We've been working on our own books, like, and it is not easy. And I love his heart behind this, which is like just to share, to leave a legacy, to impact other people. And he talks about that in the episode, like, you know, and, and it made me kind of think of like, I think all of us have like these things that we've learned that we can uh, share and and frankly, that we could really help some people by sharing. And I mean, a book is just one format. You don't have to write a book to do it, but yeah. like, it, it made me really wonder like, where else are you, are you sewing into other people's lives around you? Yeah. You know, that, that's a really important point to make because I think every single one of us has the ability to share your story, share who you are with the world that could have a tremendous impact and you might not even know it. I mean, if you look at his particular story, I mean, look what he went through, you know, when he was a kid, when he was a teenager and all the different things. And a lot of right. people back then kind of dismissed him and basically, you know, said that, you know, this guy, the back kid, you know? So yeah. if you are someone who's struggling in different things in life, I want to encourage you like, Listen, there is always hope. There is always way to actually take it to the next level. And, you know, because one of the things that I've gotten from this conversation is the whole conversation about authenticity. And I yeah. think that deep down inside, when you really look at yourself and who you are as a person, your authentic self, I don't personally, I don't believe people are inherently bad. It just sometimes is the environment, the beliefs that we learn and all those kinds of things that have us act certain way. But inherently, deep down inside, when you really look at your authentic self, um, we're meant to be awesome, impactful, amazing human beings. So um, his story basically proves that there is ways to make things happen. I mean, look, when he was talking about the football, I mean, not a big guy, you know, he had to, yeah. like he talks about the Rudy on steroids. Work extra hard. Yeah. Yeah. You work extra hard. But here's the thing. When you are someone who has to do it that way, like work extra hard, guess what? Other people will probably not see you coming. They're going to under, uh, what's the word looking for? Yeah. Underestimate you. Underestimate you. Yeah. And, um, and that is allows you to go and step out and, you know, get your, uh, skill set, your purpose, you know, polish it even more. No pun intended there. Right. Uh, but, don't uh, yeah, it, it's an amazing it, yeah. thing what you can do in life. Dude. Yeah. I love that, man. One other thing that I took from it is like not listening to people that tell you, you can't do it mm -hmm. and tuning out the negativity and the people that are against you or the people that are, and, and you know, maybe they listen, and this can come from people that really care about you as well. Like not just haters, you know, quote unquote haters. 
and people that don't want to see you succeed, but there might even be people <clears throat> that want to see you succeed, but they're afraid for you, or they mm -hmm. think you're setting yourself up, setting yourself up for disappointment or failure or, or pain. And they're trying to help you. But like, listen, you just gotta, don't listen to that. I mean, certainly some people will give you good advice. And I'm not saying you to just to just to blindly like tell everybody to like go take a hike. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. but I'm saying like the people that when you know something in in inside that you can do it, like don't listen to other people. Like, dude, I gave you an example. I've, I've, I don't know if I've shared the story in the podcast before, but I was in a motorcycle accident in '99. I dislocated my hip, and that doctor told me there's a huge chance that I would need a hip fusion because the damage was so, so extensive and I was freaking out. And I said, well, well, you know, what if, what if, what's the, like, if, if I can get past that, what's next? He's like, well, you're definitely going to need like a hip replacement. Um, and you'll, and because, you know, it, because the technology is not there, you'll probably need one every, you know, whatever decade or two. And we'll have to do that a couple of times. I'm like, well, if I like, let's skip that. What's, what's the other alternative? He's like, well, then you're definitely going to be in like debilitating pain, you know, for the rest of your life and be on medication. Um, and I decided, I'm like, you know what? screw that. No way. I'm not, I'm not going to do any of those. And here I am today, like 25 years later and praise the Lord, but I'm fine, bro. I'm I, like, mm -hmm. none of that has happened. And he, and here I could have, I could have let this guy get in my head. I could have given up. I could have just, you know, just shrunk and said, okay, my life's over as I know it. And, but I, I was like, no, no, no. And like, and so when you're faced with these things, even from people that are authorities, even people that have experience, like if you know that you're not going to give up, like, and you know, his story is one after another, he's like, even, even like to the point where he's his continual work ethic and getting these things done has resulted. Now he said, he's talking with some like, you know, movie producers and things like that. And who knows where this goes, but like the mm -hmm. thing that I think is so cool is like not taking no for an answer and like, just keep going and and making it happen and like so that that's the part that i got most inspired by yeah i mean i always talk about you know with my students i say you know it when it comes to you know never giving up right there's always something that's going to be to break it's either going to be you or it's that thing that you're up against yeah. and i say no it's not going to be me you know and i hope that yeah. it's not going to be you because if you keep moving forward think about it, even if you just bang your head against the wall if you did it long enough, either you're going to pass out from it, which is probably not a very good idea, or that <laughs> drywall is going to break, right? Don't try right? this at home. Yeah. Don't try this yeah. at home. But the thing is, the point I'm yeah. trying to make is that something will always move. Something will shift. Something will always uh, change or break through or whatever yeah. it might be. And yeah. if you keep moving, keep moving forward until the day you are, you know, pass on from this life, you can do some amazing things. If you don't let the life or the people in your life or naysayers or whoever it might be, take you off that, you know, trajectory, um, you can do amazing things. Um, and if you look yeah. at some of the most, you know, impactful people in their life, they had a lot of people who said you can't. I mean, yeah. you look at Steve Jobs and oh, dude, all, all of them, all of them. You know? yeah. So it's and listen, this part of me that like, and of course, you need to use discretion here because you can't just be a know-it-all because that is not going to serve you. No, that's not what I'm saying either. Yeah. Right, that's not what we're talking about. But we're talking about not letting people pull you down, tell you to stop, if inside you know this will work. And and uh, and you know what? And, and if it doesn't you believe work, this will you, work. Yeah, you know you you gave it everything you had. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like give it give yeah. it give it everything. Don't don't let somebody else cut that short. Listen, yeah. hope you've enjoyed this episode. Hope you got something out of it, uh, and you take something with us into your day to day. Uh, as Peter and I were saying when we first started the episode, we just did a get a life getaway, which is awesome. Which is a great place to start crafting the vision of what you want to accomplish, what you want to go after, what you're not going to say no, what you're not going to take no for. Uh, and so check out Life in Air dot com to learn more about those events as always we would love for you to leave us a review give us a rating share this with somebody who needs to be inspired as well so that they can move forward in the direction of their dreams as well we'll see you next week everyone take care have a great one Bye.